glory. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, you been touched? If they say no, touch them. <laughs> glory. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. God is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. And greatly to be praised. Oh, yes, he is. There are many things that are happening right now, globally. It certainly is end time moments, isn't it? Where there's end time moments, there's end time changers. Everyone say end time changers. I'm a part of the end time changer. You know, there are events that are changing end times. Even the Lord right now is interrupting many things. He's interrupting many things in the area now. God doesn't interrupt himself, but he's interrupting Satan's plan. <laughs> Every time he tries to go forward, God interrupts it. And everything is in a preparation because eventually who won't interrupt it? Uh, you know, grab hold of something here. When the Lord went into the temple when he was here, it said that he made a whip. And he kicked over the uh, tables and the money changers and so forth. Didn't say he hit anyone with the whip. But I want you to know that whip is called Satan. Everybody got it. God uses Satan as a whip. And his purpose is to overturn the tables. It's the purpose to get man in order. Satan used to be a servant known as Lucifer. And when he departed, God said, you're still going to serve me. Amen. You may think you're not going to serve me, but I will use your rebellion and your wickedness to serve me. In that, the whip is a representation of Satan. But that whip is in the hands of God. Amen? Amen? Would you turn to Daniel 12? Daniel 12. And time changers. There are so many things that are going on. It's changing events. Events are changing what's happening. People's prayers are changing what's happening. There are more prayers going up for this election than I've ever seen. Because many of the people are awakening. And many of them are going to sleep. And the book of Daniel, chapter 12, and verse 1, let's speak this together. And it says, And at that time, Michael, who is an archangel, shall stand up, the great prince who does what? He stands watch over the sons of your people. In other words, he stands watch over Israel. He said, There will be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a what? Nation. So we know that Israel has to become a nation before this can come. Even to that time, and at that time, your people will be what? Delivered. Remember that. They will be delivered no matter what's going on. No matter how it looks, the battle will be won. Everyone who is what? Found written in the book. Is your name written in the book? Yes. Praise Amen. God. Make sure it stays there. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awaken and some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness, not self-righteous, righteousness. Like the stars forever and ever. But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. 
Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge will increase. In other words, not only knowledge, but technology. Everything is increased. We're almost maxed out. Amen. I mean, they got things that can do so many things. It's incredible. And verse 5, Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this side of the river bank and another on the other river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, How shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half time, meaning three and a half years. And when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. And I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be what? Purified. Purified. Made white and refined. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. Are we seeing that happen now? Amen. Amen. But the wise shall understand. Only those who understand right now are known as the wise. The rest are known as wicked. And from the time that the Daniel, daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. Again, Michael, a watchman over Israel. Israel is the time clock of the events that will shift the movements of mankind in these times right now. Everything is happening about Israel. I want you to know something that's just been approved and it blew me away. I read it yesterday. Yeah, that was yesterday, I think. The United Nations just voted and approved and agreed upon that Israel will no longer be acknowledged with Jerusalem and with the Temple Mount. They no longer acknowledge them. Is that incredible? So what they have done is they're trying to rewrite history. The United Nations has just approved this. So they've approved Palestine to be its own state and control over the Temple Mount. Actually, in reality, the UN is what's taking over control of the Temple Mount. So we're seeing all of this stuff. Come on. Now that means that they've just given a go-ahead for all nations to attack Israel. They just gave the go-ahead. So this is why you're seeing all of these nations, all wars and all kinds of things, because the Luciferian agenda has been providing arms and weapons and money. So you cannot look at United States. You can't look at the United States because the people of the United States are the people of the United States that are the people of Christianity. But the people of the Luciferian agenda are not of the United States. Does everybody understand it? The United States is still United States. It's still a country of Christians. It is related to Israel. That's why we have stood for so long. And we will continue to stand. Because the hand of God is here. And in this we are seeing the shifting of Times and changes, the things that are going on rapidly, very rapidly. But again, many people are asleep. But there are those who are awake and seeing because they understand. Amen? And Zechariah chapter 2. In verse 1.
Let's speak it. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. So I said, where are you going? And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem, to see what it's width and what it's length. And there was an angel who talked with me going out, and an angel and another angel coming out to meet him, who said to him, run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her, and I will be the glory of her in the glory of her mist. Up, up, flee from the land of the north, says the Lord, for I have spread you abroad like the four winds of heaven, says the Lord. Up, Zion, escape you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of my eye. For I surely will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I am coming, and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and they shall become my people, and I will dwell in your midst. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And the Lord will take possession of Judah as its inheritance in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. Israel is the apple of God's eye. He said, come out of Babylon, which is the world system, the world system, the governments of the world system. And Revelation 18. There will be many who will not join the Antichrist. There will be many nations that will not join. They will back Israel. And I really believe that the United States will stand and back in Israel regardless of what because of the prayers of the saints. In fact, the United States did not vote or approve that vote, believe it or not. In Revelation 18 and verse 1, let's speak it. And after these things I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having great authority... And the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried out mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, my people. Do you understand that? My people. Lest you share in her sins, unless you receive her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you, and repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, Mixed double for her. And the measure that she glorified herself, lived luxuriously in the same measure, give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. Therefore her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived in luxury with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. That sounds like oil wells burning. Standing at a distance far for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, 
for in one hour your judgment has come. And all the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for, one, for no one buys her merchandise anymore. Merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon and incense, fragrant oil and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies and souls of men. Wow. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? So we see here that it's very possible in this arena that the United Nations is considered the Queen of Babylon, associated with connecting all of the Antichrist nations because they're the ones that are saying what should happen. Remember, the United Nations was supposed to be peacekeeping. The only peace they keep is the oil and the gold and the silver. They keep a piece of it all. It is very possible that the UN is a Babylon global system which is corrupt under the Luciferian agenda to dethrone Israel and her offspring of Jews and Christians. All nations against Israel will suffer. Anyone that comes here will suffer, will come against Israel. In Mark 13, so he's saying, come out from among her. Come out of that system. Oh, glory. Glory. Mark 13, and verse 24. There is much persecution of Jews and Christians globally. We see it here, but we don't see hardly anything compared to the murders and slaughters and beheadings globally. It is happening. You don't see it much on the media because they don't want us to know here because the media is under the Luciferian agenda. It is controlled by them. In verse 24, would you read it with me? Mark 13 and verse 24. Is everybody there? But in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather together his elect. Everyone say, I'm his elect. I'm elect. From the four winds, from the farthest side of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. The fig tree is known as Israel. When its branches have already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch, and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house, gave authority to his servants. Who is that? Us. And to each his work, and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. Again, there are many who are sleeping right now. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. Watch. Again, the fig tree is known as Israel. He said something very powerful because he's given us, how many of y'all know God speaks in code? And only the Spirit of God 
causes decode. So the carnal man cannot decode what God is saying. They can only take things literally and hope that they're correct. That's why the word says that not only the spirit of God can bring you to deep things of God. Amen. That's why it's important to stay filled with the Spirit of God. That's why it's important to abide. That's why it's important to constantly come and get fed. Because we want to stay so filled and so saturated so that we see the things that others don't. So we can see through the physical into the spirit. So that we don't allow emotions to dictate decisions. So that we don't allow events to bring fear or circumstances in our lives or our families or anything else to change. We're to be unchangeable, immovable, no matter what. Steadfast all the way to the end. Consistent. Why? Because that brings trust. Amen? And we want to be known as faithful stewards of God. So in this it said that Israel had to become a nation. Israel became a nation in 1948. Amen? And in 1948, a generation is approximately 70 years. So 1948 plus 70 equals 2018. Hello. Now, are these possibilities? You bet your sweet bippy. These are very strong possibilities. God speaks in numbers. In fact, the Hebrew language, every letter is a number. And even Satan king, Satan's kingdom uses the Hebrew language. In fact, you see the monsters, the monster drinks, all of those is Hebrew language upside down. WWW, which means 666. So those monster drinks represent Satan's kingdom. In fact, the website starts with WWW, doesn't it? 666. Every barcode that is placed on every bit of merchandise has the number 666 in it, every single one. And God does speak in numbers in multiple ways. Oh, hallelujah. So in this time, he's saying those who sleep, look at many believers are asleep. In, in, in the scriptures, in the, in the book of Timothy, he says, look at, here's the two major things that people are staying asleep of. Lovers of themselves and lovers of money. <laughs> That's how they stay asleep. Lovers of self and lovers of money. Why? Because it's prideful and rebellious. And they will sleep. Why? They will, because the word says that in a person's in that condition, they will miss what God is trying to bring. Moves people out of position. In fact, Psalm 50 and verse 16. Let's go there for a second. So is prideful and rebelliousness righteousness or is it wicked? It's wicked. Psalm 50. In verse 16. Is everybody there? Let's speak... Speak this together. Psalm 50, verse 16. What does God say? But to the wicked, God says, What right have you to declare my statutes? Whoa, ho. <laughs> or take my covenant in your mouth. Seeing you hate what? Direction. Counsel, correction, and direction. Yes. <laughs> Seeing you hate instruction. Everyone say, uh, Correction. Correction brings direction no correction no direction it puts a person off course when somebody cannot receive correction it puts that person off course why because they're prideful and rebellious god calls them wicked i don't care if they speak in tongues or not they're still wicked you're not judged by gifts you're judged by fruits Seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you. That's counsel. When you saw a thief, you consented with him. Hello. 
associations. And I've been a partaker with adulterers. Oh, hallelujah. You give your mouth to evil and your tongue fr frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brothers and sisters. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I kept silent. See, many people think, oh, it's okay. Because God didn't do anything yet. How many of you know he does it when you least expect him? And people, you know, most of the time people forget all about it. And then when it happens, they go, I don't understand. I've been doing everything I'm supposed to. No, you didn't. Why? Because everything that's brought on and we bring on ourselves. These things you have done and I kept silent. You thought that I was altogether like you. You thought we were cool. But I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces. And there be none to deliver. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. Wow. Now, you got to grab hold of something here. It's powerful. Again, individuals, this is because they've been caught up in self-righteousness, selfishness, selfish ambitions, and love of money, love of self. They become sleepy and blind. They can't receive correction. They go off course. They associate or consent with others that are out of order also and follow lust of their hearts. They commit adulteries, adultery in their minds. They speak evil about others and believe that they are above others, which is full of pride. Now grab this. Praise without conduct of, or of obedience nullifies prayer. So you can come and praise, but if your conduct is not a right, it nullifies everything. So everybody understand that. So you can do all the praise you want. You can speak in tongues all you want. You can do all. But if you're out of order, it nullifies everything. Has everybody got it? It's important. Praise without conduct nullifies. So people think that you can just praise and go do whatever, and that's wrong. It keeps them asleep. They have no idea. They're still sleeping. So they're sleepwalking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs 12 and verse 1. Let's read it together. Whoever loves what? Instruction loves knowledge. But he who hates instruction is what? Stupid. <laughs> Snap. That's pretty, that's pretty harsh, isn't it? I mean, we don't go around calling people stupid. Maybe idiots and morons, but not stupid. <laughs> An idiot is one who does something in ignorance. A moron who does something and knows about it. <laughs> there are a lot of morons. Verse 2. <laughs> a good man obtains favor from the Lord... But a man of wicked intentions will what? Be condemned. A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of righteousness cannot be what? Move. The root of righteousness, a person that is rooted in righteousness will never be moved. Can't be moved. Why? Because he's more concerned about his relationship than anything of the world has to offer or anyone else has to offer. Amen? Praise God. The root of righteousness, they will not be moved. Those with self-righteousness and tensions are easily moved. And they will miss revelation. And why? what happens when they miss revelation? They do not hold restraints. Because the word says revelation is what put restraints on us. Without revelation, there are no restraints. So a person is loose. And he's easily offended and emotionally messed up. Psalm 19.
And you can't trust someone that always makes decisions by emotion. They are unstable. And those are people that are asleep. That's what we call sleepwalking. <laughs> Amen. Psalm 19 and verse 1. End time changers, praise God. Things that, events that are changing end time, we're seeing everything changing right now. There's what we call holy shift. It's a holy shift, man. I'm telling you. Praise God. Aren't you glad we're not religious? Man, I was at a service one night. I was uh, preaching, uh, I think it was in Virginia. And the first thing I got up there and I said, yeah, man, there's a holy shift going on. The pastor fell right off his chair. <laughs> but God moved. <laughs> he moved. <laughs> Psalm 19, verse 1, let's speak it. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day on today utters speech. Now, how does day on today utter speech? His creation speaks of who he is. It says, and night on tonight reveals knowledge. Night on tonight, that means the stars speak. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. In other words, everyone, there isn't a language that cannot understand it. Their line has gone out through all the earth <clears throat> and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. In other words, we see that there is a sun that shines, but there's also the son of God who is in the tabernacle, who is the tabernacle himself. Watch in verse 5, which is like a what? Bridegroom. He is known as the bridegroom and we are known as the bride. Coming out of his chamber... And rejoices like a strong man to run its race. It's rising from one end of heaven and its circuit to the other end. And there's nothing hidden from his presence or his heat. In other words, he is speaking about the signs. Creation speaks of the wonders of God during the day. But God's heavenly stars and planets and moons and so forth speak of him. There is what we call the constellations. There are 12 constellations. These are revealed at a specific time. The number 12 means government. So God is showing himself in the 12 constellations. Each constellation is the story, the testimony of Jesus Christ. From Leo the lion from virgin, for Virgo the virgin to Leo the lion, all the way to the king. Everything is about his life in 12 constellations, which is revealed at certain specific times, connecting stars together to give a picture. And the, how many of y'all know a picture is worth a thousand words? Amen? Constellations are clusters of stars that form an image that relates to the message of God. In reality, the constellations is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the message from God. And they are only can be read at night, can't they? Amen? 12 means government. I'm going to give a couple numbers here just so that you, we, we already talked about six, you know, it's associated with Satan's kingdom. It actually mean, means man in the natural things. Seven is a number of complete. It means complete. Five actually means grace. In the Hebrew calendar, we are entering the year 5777. For them, it is the year of the return of the Messiah. Five, seven, seven, seven. So you've got grace with triple complete. <laughs> that year is actually 2017. 
5777. It is the new year. It, it starts, it actually, it, it, well, hallelujah. It, it's, their new year is on October 2nd, 2016. It's called Rosh Hashanah, or Feast of what? Trumpets. Feast of what? Trumpets. It's associated with the time of complete. So 5777 in October 2nd in 2017 will be the complete, supposedly, the Feast of Trumpets for the Jewish calendar. They are expecting the Messiah to return. I think he's here right now, personally. <laughs> You know, I mean, he's here. But remember, he's going to first return through the body of Christ. I believe that there'll be the early and latter rain coming. There'll be great signs and wonders because God's desire is that no one be lost. The final sign to the loss will be the rapture. That'll be the final sign. And the Feast of Trumpets is associated with the removal, the taking of the body of Christ. In the book of Revelation in chapter 12, let's go there for a second. You know, they, uh, they've come up with, and it can only be done now through the computers, the decoding of the Bible. And it's associated with letters and numbers because they take the Torah, the five books, and as they go through it, they're able to calculate. But this calculation is so intense, it has to be done by a computer that they're able to find everyone's name in the book certain dates of things and events. It's called the Bible code. And that's what, what the angel was even talking to Daniel about. Knowledge would increase. Things will be revealed in the latter times. Look at all the archaeological finds they're finding now. Things that are being really exposed all over the world. They, people, you never heard things about the giants and the Nephilim until these last few years. And they've got skeletons and all kinds of stuff all over the world. 35 feet, all kinds of stuff. Pyramids, people never knew about the pyramids. In reality, they thought the Egyptians built all the pyramids wrong. Not that they didn't associate with it, but then you got Egyptians that were Nephilim. And we still see the genes happening today. It's been brought down. In Revelation chapter 12, in verse 1, let's speak this, please. This is a constellation. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, verse 1. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and her head of a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Now this is powerful. So we see a constellation of a woman with child cried out in labor. This is a woman in the heavenlies to be seen. In fact, this constellation will be seen on September 23rd, 2017 from Jerusalem. They'll be able to see it with the naked eye. It'll be clear. Ooh. And it will be its next full Appearance. September 23rd, 2017. Pretty wild, isn't it? Now understand that the word of God is multidimensional and multi-meaning sometimes. It talks about past, present, and future. It talks about things celestial and terrestrial. Amen? So, um, we see that there's a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her and her head a garland of 12 stars. Again, that's a representation of government, isn't it? Amen. And being with child, child cried out in labor and in pain and, and so forth. In verse 3, actually, you know what? I want to go to Isaiah 9. Keep your finger here. So we're going to confirm something. Isaiah 9. Is everybody okay? Yeah. 
Isaiah 9 and verse 6. Verse 6. Let's speak it together, please. For unto us a child is born. Now, this was prophesied by Isaiah. You've got to understand this. This was not yesterday. This is thousands of years ago, man. <laughs> For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the what? And the what? The Number 12. The government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called what? Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there'll be what? No end. No end. Everyone else is going to end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Does everybody see that? So that's confirmation. He's going to perform this, no doubt. Revelation 12, verse 3. And it says, And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads, and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. And his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was what? It was born. The dragon represents what? Satan's kingdom. He came to stop the birth that will rule the earth and the universe. Watch now. Are you ready? Verse 5. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. In other words, he went and sat at the right hand of the Father. Amen? That's when Jesus ascended. It's called a rapture. Jesus was raptured, caught up. In verse 6, Then the woman fled into the what? In the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God that... They should feed her there for 1,260 days. Okay, are you ready for this? The child was caught up to the right hand of God, and the woman fled into the wilderness prepared by God. Go to John 14. Who is the woman? The bride. That'd be me and you. John 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be what? Troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, and in my Father's house are what? Many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I do what? I go prepare a place for you. Hmm, called a wilderness. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come and again and what? Receive you to myself. That where I am, there you also will be. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas, of course, said, well, Lord, we don't know the way. Where are you going? And how can we know the way? carnal head and Jesus said to them I am the what the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except for what through me so we see Jesus is the way truth and life he is the one who has prepared a place for his followers of right standing before him right standing means righteousness okay back to Revelation 12 is everybody okay? All right. Revelation 12 and 16, or 6, I'm sorry. And it says, And a woman fled in the wilderness where she has a place prepared for her that they should feed her there for how long? 1,260 days. Okay. Everybody remember the tetrad. 
It is the four blood moons that has passed. Amen? Okay. These tetrads are four consecutive lunar eclipses that became blood moons, coinciding with Jewish holidays, every single one of them. They're called the blood moons. I want to give you the dates of these four blood moons before we continue so you get an understanding of what's happening. April 15, 2014 was the first one. Now, I want you to know that these tetrads uh, just don't appear. I don't, in fact, the next one is in four thousands. If, actually, they don't even have a next one. But anyways. <laughs> you know, I, I, on the Nassau calendar or whatever, they, there isn't one. So we're, we're looking at it as the last one. Of course. April 15th was the first one, 2014. October 8th, 2014 was the second one. April 4th, 2015 was the third one. And the fourth one was two, uh, September 27th, 2015. Now, this may be coincidence, But from the first blood moon of the Tetra to the Feast of Trumpets on September 20th in that period of time is 1,260 days. Something to consider. Then on the 23rd, which is like the day after, will appear in Jerusalem. The woman of the book of Revelations chapter 1 where will be the naked eye will be able to see it. Now there's something else happening at that time. In that period of time, uh, Jupiter, I'm going to talk about some of the planets here. Jupiter is known as the king planet in the representation of the king of glory. This is wild. Jupiter at this time will enter the womb of Virgo, the virgin, in November 2016. So everybody got this? For conception. It will exit the womb on September 9th, 2017. Now, in the European Space Agency, uh, they, they stated that they had a comet. They found a comet that was coming. And they actually were able to place a probe on this comet. And they called this comet 67. Now this comet, <laughs> okay, has everybody got this? Okay, so you got Jupiter, the king, going into the womb of Virgo, and then exiting. Now you've got this comet that's coming by and it'll be in conjunction with the moon passing by the foot of Virgo. It'll come by the foot of Virgo. And this will be on September 23rd, 2017. Now, I want to share something with you again so that you grab hold of something. Israel became a nation in 1948. Israel, Jerusalem became her capital in 1967. You got comet number 67 going by the foot of Virgo. Does everybody see this? Is everybody okay? Now, if you take 1967 to the date of September 23rd, 2017, that's 50 years called Jubilee. <laughs> okay. So they, the reason why they called it 67 is because they sent a pro up there. 67 and 67 and it landed all right but in 1967 they had a six-day war where israel 
took Jerusalem and it became its capital. Okay? From that point on, 1967, to where this comet is going to come by the foot of Virgo, right, is 50 years, which means Jubilee. Is everybody okay on this? Does everybody get this? Okay, go to Genesis 3. You'll see a better picture. You know, God does speak in numbers, doesn't he? He's a numbers man. You could probably look some of this up on the internet and find more teachings on it because there's been some parts of these that have been uh, taught and certain people have had certain opinions on it and whatever. I've picked a lot of this up off of it. But you can't deny the area of the, uh, the, space, uh, the space programs and so forth, what they're stating. You, you can't just deny that. And in uh, Genesis 3 in verse 14... What the Lord said, and the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle and more than every beast of the field. And on your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put what? Enmity, Enmity hatred between you, your seed, you and the woman. And he says, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your what? Head. And you shall bruise his what? See how the comet comes by to bruise the what? Heel. The woman is Virgo. Amen. The woman is seed is Jupiter. Satan's seed is unknown. There's going to be a collision. We don't know what's going to happen. It may be an unknown planet. Who knows? It may be his planet, what they call X or Nibiru or whatever. And to bruise its heels, an object of collision. Now, again, that could be, mean multiple things like war, whatever. Remember, the woman also represents Israel. Amen. Go to Jeremiah 30. This is why we're seeing the military operations building up all around Israel right now. In verse 1, the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, thus speaks the Lord of Israel saying, write in the book for yourselves all the words that I have spoken to you. For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will bring back from captivity my people. Is he doing that? Amen. They're being returned. Israel and Judah, says the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. For thus says the Lord, we have heard of a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask now and see whether a man is ever in labor with child. So why do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in labor? All faces turn pale. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble. That means tribulation. He shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from your neck. And I will burst your bonds. Foreigners shall no more enslave them, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. Therefore do not fear, O my people, sir, O my servant Jacob, says the Lord, nor be dismayed, O Israel, for behold, I will save you from afar 
and your seed from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return, have rest and be quiet, and no one shall make him afraid. That's called Israel. Jacob is Israel. But I am with you, says the Lord, to save you, though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered you. Yet I will make a complete end of you, but I will correct you in justice. I will not make a complete end of you, and I will correct you in justice, and I will not let you go altogether unpunished. That's why there will be disaster in Israel for rejecting the Messiah. But he will still save them. Amen? Is everybody okay? In Revelation 12 and 13, I want to go there for a minute. Remember, the Feast of Trumpets is associated and related to the rapture, the taking away of the body of Christ. In Revelation 12 and 13, Actually, let's start at verse 12 for a minute. So you see this. It says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in the earth, and you who dwell in them. Praise God. But woe to the what? Inhabitants of the earth and to the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows it is a what? Short time. You know, he knows he has a short time now. He's running out of time. So he's going to try and destroy the whole earth as quick as possible. He's lying to his elite. See, all of these elite that have sold their souls for fame and riches and built underground tunnels and, and, and have all of these homes underground, they will be destroyed. See, they don't realize that. See, Satan is trying to destroy the whole earth. He believes that because he's been sentenced to this realm even though there's a second heaven, that if he can destroy it all, he can escape. So he will use his even elite that he talks about that are all of his soldiers and whatever and humans that have sold their souls out. They will be, they're the most deceived. In verse 13, would you read it with me? Now when a dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. I believe these two wings are Moses and Elijah. That she might fly into where? The wilderness. To her place where she is nursed for time and times and half the time from the presence of the serpent. Does everybody understand that? That is known as the rapture. Is everybody okay? All right. Now, I want to go to Mark 9. The word says in Peter that one day with the Lord is equal to a thousand years. <clears throat> Remember, the word is, if this were, if we could turn this whole Bible into Hebrew, it would be a bunch of numbers. That would have to be coded, decoded. <clears throat> In verse 2, is everybody there? Mark 9, verse 2. Now after six days, six days equals what? 6,000 years. One day with the Lord. Remember, this is prophetic. God is speaking prophetically. Now we've already hit 6,000 years, basically. But it says after 6,000 years. Amen? After 6,000 years, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain apart from themselves, and he was what? Transfigured. Before them, his clothes became shining, exceedingly white like snow, such as no laundry on earth can whiten them. And Elijah appeared with them with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. So you see Elijah and Moses. Moses represents those who have died in Christ that will be risen. And Elijah represents those who are alive, who will be taken up alive, which is known as the rapture. 
Does everybody see there? This is known as the transfiguration. In other words, it's a representation of me and you being transfigured. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. Actually, before we go there, let's go to Thessalonians 4. <clears throat> First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But I do not want you to be stupid. I mean ignorant. Brethren. Concerning what? Those who have fallen asleep. Those who have died in Christ. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep. That's under the wing of Moses. <clears throat> who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who asleep. <clears throat> For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the what? Trumpet known as fulfilling the Feast of Trumpets. With the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the Lord in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with him. So the Lord will not touch the earth, we will be taken. And it doesn't matter whether a person's been cremated or buried. God knows where every ash is. Amen. Even if one flew out while you were driving, he knows exactly. <laughs> Even if you sneezed on that, they would go, ah! He knows exactly where they are, okay? And he will gather it together and make a glorified body of it. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 15. That's why he's called God. <laughs> Some people, hey, what about it being created? Is God going to know where you are? <laughs> he is God, right? So we see all of these end time changes, events, things that are happening, prophetically, things that are going on. So many possibilities and excitements. You know, we haven't even considered, okay, so we've talked about all these things. What's going to happen eight or nine months prior to this, of the conception? Who knows? You know? We don't even know. We're just, but we're to be unready. I'm ready, making sure that our conduct is upright with God. We're staying ready no matter what. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 50. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. Behold, I tell you what. Uh, no, okay, never mind. Verse 50. <laughs> now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, praise God, but we shall all be what? Changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? steadfast and what immovable always abounding in the work of the lord knowing that your labor is not in vain as long as it's done in the lord amen so everybody got it praise be to god end time changers everyone say i'm an end time changer there are events that are changing the end times but again many are asleep they're so busy building their empire building their life that they are missing. Amen? They're missing.
So, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you keep us awake. Don't let the enemy come in and make us stupid. Keep us strong in the Lord and the power of your might that we are in divine order. So that your divine timing can be manifested in our lives according to your will. That your divine nature and your divine power will be expressed in us and through us. Lord, we thank you for this revelation that will continue to keep restraints on us. Because without revelation, there are no restraints. So Lord, pray, I pray blessing over your people, blessing over this seed. And I ask that you keep your people awake and grant them favor as you continue to pour out the early and latter rain. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.